Flat Earthers have a hard time understanding real experiments. Nothing demonstrates this more clearly than Eric Debay trying to use actual science to demonstrate that the Earth is the center of the solar system. He is coming. Cover your butt. Help fight the Flat Earth bots by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more weekly content. 200 Proofs Earth is Not a Spinning Ball by Eric Dubay. 16. The experiment known as Aries Failure proved that stars move relative to a stationary Earth and not the other way around. By first filling a telescope with water to slow down the speed of light inside, then calculating the tilt necessary to get the starlight directly down the tube, Airy failed to prove the heliocentric theory, since the starlight was already coming in the correct angle with no change necessary, and instead proved the geocentric model correct. In his incredible incompetence, Dubay doesn't even understand what the experiment he is citing was actually testing. This really just demonstrates the complete ignorance that flat earthers have to how science works. They cherry pick parts of studies and simply make shit up for the other parts. First off, Aries failure is a term that is used solely by flat earthers. The term is used to muddy the waters regarding the experiment. Like Dubay just did, flat earthers will say that Aries failed to prove heliocentrism, but this is incorrect. If one could say that Airy failed at anything, it was failing at showing the ether drag. The experiment was designed to test what was thought to be the medium through which light travels. Since light acts like a wave, it needed a medium to travel through. Scientists of the past thought of this medium as the ether. In order to test this concept, Airy, along with others that we'll talk about shortly, designed their experiments solely to test ether drag. In his slimy incompetence, Dubay read, and I say that with air quotes you can't see, the experiment and decided that it was testing the movement of the Earth when it wasn't. 17. Olber's paradox states that if there were billions of stars, which are suns, the night sky would be filled completely with light. As Edgar Allan Poe said, were the succession of stars endless, then the background of the sky would present us a uniform luminosity, since there could exist absolutely no point in all that background at which would not exist a star. In fact, Olber's paradox is no more a paradox than George Airy's experiment was a failure. Both are actually excellent refutations of the heliocentric spinning ball earth model. Once again, you fail to understand the concept that you are talking about. Olber's paradox was a thought experiment that was used as an unsolved problem with a static and eternal universe. Guess what? We don't live in a static universe. Olber's paradox is simply solved by the Big Bang Theory. You see, the universe is expanding, and since it's expanding away from us, the distant stars and galaxies are being redshifting, resulting in less dense light. This is also why the Hubble telescope takes pictures in infrared, because the light from distant stars is shifted red, making them harder for the human eye to see. Metaphysics has a much better explanation of this concept, link in the description. But you don't even need NASA and telescopes to solve the paradox. Edgar Allan Poe, who you quoted, had this to say, The only mode, therefore, in which under such a state of affairs we could comprehend the voids which our telescopes find innumerable directions would be by supposing the distance of the invisible background so immense that no ray from it has yet been able to reach us at all. Pretty much what Poe is saying here is that the universe isn't infinite. Like I said at the beginning, Olber's paradox relates to a static and infinite universe. As it turns out, the universe is finite. It had a beginning. Therefore, there's no paradox. We simply can't see stars in the black parts of the sky because we are looking back in time and there are no stars there. The universe is young in the black parts of space. Do you know what the best part of all of this is? Post quote that I just read comes directly after the quote that you read. You couldn't even be bothered to read the whole paragraph. The solution to the very problem that you are talking about is in the same paragraph where you quoted someone phrasing the paradox. Proof 18 is the same as 16, except that it is talking about a Michelson-Morley experiment that was also designed to test ether drag, and not the motion of the Earth. 19. 
Tycho Brahe famously argued against the heliocentric theory in his time, positing that if the Earth revolved around the Sun, the change in relative position of the stars after six months' orbital motion could not fail to be seen. He argued that the stars should seem to separate as we approach and come together as we recede. In actual fact, however, after 190 million miles of supposed orbit around the sun, not a single inch of parallax can be detected in the stars, proving that we have not moved at all. Well, he was wrong. Also, stellar parallax has been observed. I would say that you just failed at doing your research since simply googling stellar parallax gives you the information on the subject. But, considering your tendency to make shit up, I'm just going to say that you're lying. Four more down, and unfortunately we are approaching the tedious repetition of proofs. Next time we'll be tackling a grand total of 12 proofs in one video.